day to you. I know who was buried in that grave. A young charcoal burner. So begin the tragic tale of the young charcoal burner who became entangled with the devil himself. No, don't start. What devil? I'm trying to tell you. Ugh. He was from Ledechko. He was trying to eke out a living for himself and his wife, but he couldn't manage. When she fell pregnant, he took to stealing. Pride drove him from the straight and narrow path, and soon he sold his soul to the devil to fill his stomach. They caught him and punished him, but some of the people he'd robbed didn't think it was enough. Then when his wife died in childbirth, and the child too, he blamed everyone for it. Even God, apparently. But when the time came to pay his debt to hell, the devil had no use for his soul and took his wife and child instead. The charcoal burner cursed God, who, who struck him down in righteous vengeance. But the dead man's soul never left his body. He came back as a revenant to vent his rage at God and men and take vengeance on the living. Jesus, did you listen to what I said at all? Sorry, did you say something? Oh, never mind. What do you want me to do with it? Well, the question is, what would the Revenant do to get revenge on the villagers? Well, Apprentice? What about his wife and child? No doubt he'd want to avenge their death. Well, how did they die? In childbirth. And when his love turned to rage, the water turned to blood. Nothing too original, but it's tried and tested. If you do it at the baths, everyone will hear of it. How am I supposed to do that? It might be a bit suspicious if I'm seen walking around with a pail of blood. No problem. There's a certain potion that will do the trick easily. He cursed God. That's very serious. Hmm. What is it that most brings God to mind? Uh, they don't have a church there. But everyone will have a rosary. I can't think of anything else. That's it! If folks start losing their rosaries, they'll have sleepless nights over it. You want me to steal rosaries? But that's... Or just exchange them. For what? Um, for nothing. <sighs> Great. He was stealing food from people, right? So, supposing he started again? We should steal from people? Disgraceful. Have you no shame? Maybe just a few eggs from hen coops, like the gossip mentioned. Hmm. Well, that wouldn't be too serious a sin. Will they put it down to the revenant, though? They would, if I put some charcoal there instead. And their nourishment, he turned into ash. The gossip mentioned the butcher. It seems he was infuriated that the charcoal burner's punishment was too lenient. And the Revenant spoiled their meat with his malign touch. How's that? Ooh, spoiled meat is a classic example of a Revenant's power. Huh. I thought it was the work of bad butchers. That too, sometimes. So, I should switch the good meat for bad at the butchers. What about the butcher woman? What about her? Her conscience was troubled on account of her man and she couldn't sleep. But I helped her, so she's found some peace. So, no problem then. What? I'm supposed to scare the wits out of her and start all over again. All right. If you can find some other solution, you don't have to switch the meat. But I wouldn't worry about her. But make sure it's the same kind of meat. Not even a revenant will turn a cow into a chicken. So... Switch eggs for charcoal, switch the meat, colour the water in the baths, and um, switch the rosaries. That ought to do it. I hope so. Of course, 
If you come up with anything else, don't let me hold you back. Talking to people might give you ideas. Traders, the bailiff. But what if someone sees me in the act? They mustn't. Otherwise, it'll end up like Sasau all over again. Don't draw attention to yourself, or they'll put two and two together. Sure. I'll keep my head down. And how would I know if I've succeeded? I doubt it'll be announced on the market square. I'll be the first to know. They'll come running to me for a remedy, like hands at feeding time. Off you go and raise hell. But whatever he did, don't you think he deserves some peace? Dear Henry, after all the poor wretch went through, I'd say he's beyond any peace. Well, he certainly won't have any as long as I'm carrying his bones around with me. Ah, but you know who those remains could help. Help? Who? How? Me, of course. And I'd pay you a nice price for a revenant's bones. But there is no revenant. Not yet. What do you say? All right. I'll sell them to you. Splendid. Revenant bones. They'll be very useful indeed. Take care now. What do you need? I'd like to try chumps one more time. Of course. Ah, one more chump. Excellent. So how much will you bet? No half measures. What's there to save for, anyway? That's the betting over with. Now here are your arrows. See you later. I won't miss the next one. Got it! You've no chance against me, amateurs. Let's see you beat that. I won't miss the next one. Hit home. Hit. Almost had. Ah, well, I won't miss the next one. Oh, 
I won't miss the next one. Got it! Hit home. Almost had it. Well, the wind took it. Bloody hell, the wind took it. Time's up, folks. One last arrow, and that's it. So, how did it go? Well done, Henry. You've come first. It looks like you really do know what you're doing with a bow. You're still not up to my standard, mind you, but a pretty good effort. Here are your winnings. I hope you'll wager them on some chumps again. See you later. like a stuffed squirrel all day and night? If you can't <laughs> pay for a bath, clear off! What are you gaping at? Have you paid? No? Then get lost! What? Show yourself! What the? What's the recipe for that potion you were talking about? You mean for colouring the water? Oh, well... Well? Pay close attention now. I'm all ears. How love turned bloodshed. Once there was a knight, who, though upright and noble-looking, 
had a prickly, unapproachable appearance. He fell in love with a fragile young maid, who he saw with her sisters and feet, all wearing white red ribbons. But he was afraid his prickly exterior would frighten him. So he asked the advice of another man, a pious and learned crusader, who carried the name of the patron saint of his order with pride. The pious knight told him he would arrange a rendezvous with the maid. All three would drink wine together by the river, and he would help his friend to get acquainted with her. This they did, but the maid fell in love instead with the pious knight. The stern knight was enraged and challenged his rival to a duel. The two fought long and fiercely, but they were equally matched. And so, in the end, they both fell mortally wounded. Anguished at the tragedy her beauty had caused, the young maid took a dagger from one of the knights and plunged it into her own heart. Their bodies lay together on the ground, and the blood flowed from them into the river turning the waters crimson. I thought you were going to tell me the recipe, not some fable. Well, it is the recipe. I mean, the recipe is concealed in the story. What on earth for? So I don't forget it. All right. So what does it mean? I can't remember. Great. So if you don't know, who does? You'll figure it out, my loyal apprentice. I remember there are three plants in the story, but that's about all. But I know it was a simple recipe. It should be enough to grind the ingredients and brew them together for one turn. So, all you have to do is work out what the ingredients are from the story. Sure. Why make things simple if you can complicate them? May the Lord watch over you. Mandrake roots taken straight from the yeah. God watch over you, good night, especially in these dark times. Can I do something for you? Good luck, Ben.